The Panthers? What are they doing? Are they going to win a game this whole year? I mean, looking at their schedule and what they might do before the trade deadline, it's not looking likely. I mean, yeah, what, I mean, they win. They win versus the Bears. Like, what's? I mean, I'd be okay. I'd be. I would hope they would lose, but it depends on where the Bears' position is sitting. I mean, like the Houston, Houston next week. I don't see it. Indy maybe, but I don't know. I don't know where they squeeze out a win on the rest of their schedule. Yeah, and this is so. You know, uh, I'm kind of coming. Uh, let me be clear. I'm coming to this from in, in no way a place of haterness. I'm coming in from a full blown case of sympathy here uh because you know like i say this every week but you know i like bryce a lot and i and i like you know i've always wanted to it's like i want to it's like it's hard to say when they're in your division but you get what i'm saying i want to see the man succeed i want because I've, I've i've been high on that he's gonna have a good career but the truth is that it's becoming more and more evident every single week he could not have been thrown into a more atrocious situation he couldn't have the o-line not good the receiving core minus Thielen, not playing good at all uh, the running backs are playing good, I guess. That's a bright side, but it's not like it matters because the O-line is not good. Uh, back to the defense, all the good young names are all up for grabs for trade right now. They're all probably not even going to be here after this year. The restart point is going to be so low for the Panthers that it's kind of like by the time that Bryce is even developing and it's, it's time to pay him, what is this team going to look like? Is paying him going to completely hinge off all the progress they made? With all the young players, they're in a fucked situation yeah. from my point of view. Just a just a bad way. I feel like they did a very bad job of like timing all this out. Especially like in my opinion, like if you know you're gonna go get a quarterback and trade up for him, why'd you not take the two first for Brian Burns? Because you're not getting that now. No one's offering two first for Brian Burns. Like that was that was like a uh, a just a critical mismanagement. Uh, of assets like two first why would you not take that especially when the rams were bad so i guess here's my thing okay this so the panthers are actually the highest scoring team in the nfl nfc south which is insane but they actually played okay this game and adam Thielen is playing really really good which is super surprising i mean it's not like he was like there wasn't anything left in the tank but it's just like they, I don't know. They just, it to me, it didn't seem like he was going to be that guy. I mean, I got him in a lot of fantasy, so I'm, I'm real happy about it. But here's a stat that I, I looked this up because I knew it just goes with our narrative. Shubba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard ran for more yards this game than Miles Sanders had this whole year in any game. And it's like, then it's like, okay, why did you pay that guy? Why would you not just go get the top receiver on the market? So, I don't know. I honestly feel like if they get a true number one receiver and push Thielen down to that two spot, I actually think their offense looks okay. I agree, but it's also funny you say that because that, like also, that also kind of conflicts my side note I had about Adam Thielen this year is in a weird way, and li- like, Follow me for a second. It's going to sound stupid if you don't let me finish the point because you'll see what I'm saying. In a weird way, it's almost like Adam Thielen's productivity is tied to him being the number one in any given offense. And let me be clear with what I'm saying because it's not like he doesn't run, you know, he's not like the crispiest route runner. He's not the crispiest anything, but he's got great hands and he's crafty. So it's like when when, when, you're, when he's your first read and you're really like, we're stealing, we're stealing, as opposed to someone else, you kind of, you, you witness him doing the crafty shit and you can kind of like slip it into him right in a tight window. You know what I mean? Like right when he's making, he's turning around, coming back to you. He's that kind of receiver. Like he's a QB friendly receiver, but where it's like, if he's not the first option, it's harder to find him on those QB friendly moments because what I'm saying is like kind of like his productivity is tied to being able to read him right, like the first person where you're kind of like I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Okay, Adam is going to be open for a split second. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, I feel you, and I get it. I mean, there's a reason the Vikings didn't keep him. I don't know if they just weren't in their plans, if they didn't like him or whatever, or maybe they felt like he wasn't being productive in their system. Um, but yeah, no. So kind of going into Miami, I mean, I think. The Carolina defense obviously had no chance against the Miami offense, but I'm not going to lie, the way the game started, I was like, oh, no, no way Carolina beats Miami. Um, you know, I like I said, I mean, I keep saying it, but I got a lot of stock in Carolina's pick this year. 
So, but Miami, like, their defense, man, I don't know. Like, I really thought Vic Fangio would get in there and they would be able to pick it up, and that's just not looking like it. Um, I know Jalen Ramsey isn't back yet, but um, basically all I got to say about the Dolphins is, one, if their defense picks it up, they're unbeatable. And two, Tyreek and Tua, I would say, are my favorites for MVP. Yeah, no, I'm 100% with you on all that. I had a couple of funny side notes about this I wanted to point out. Okay, and okay. also just, I wanted to come back on a take I had a couple years ago also. Number one, this we'll start off with, we'll start off light, we'll start off funny, but this, I'm not even kidding when I say this. It's ridiculous, but it's actually true. Besides, besides when he first came in the league, I'll acknowledge that was not the move. That was a mess. But, you know, Eli Apple has now found himself in three separate in a row situations where he plays on a really, really good competitive team. And it's hilarious. It's like wherever Eli Apple finds, he's, he's all, somehow Eli, Eli Apple always finds himself. He started off in the Saints when we were really, really competitive. You know, he goes over to the Bengals. Now, sure enough, he finds himself over here on the Dolphins. Like, what's going on, man? What is Eli Apple doing to deserve these situations? It's like, but then uh... also. Who was that? No, you say? No, it's like that NBA player. I can't remember his name. Is it like, um, oh man, what was his name? He he won like three rings in a row. Like he played for Golden State. He played for Toronto. Patrick McCaw. Yes, I knew it was Patrick. That's I, hilarious. I, I had Patrick McCaw in my head, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, that doesn't sound right. But yeah, no, Pat McCaw. Yeah, so that's funny, bro. I noticed that too. That it's it's so random. But then yeah, so take I want to come back to it. Let me be clear. I don't even know if the audio would still exist at this. This was literally like a couple years ago at this point. But I remember there was a period of time where Deshaun Elliott was getting reps with the Ravens pretty heavily. And I was like, you know, it was, I think he was like coming in for someone injured. And I was like, yeah, this guy, Deshaun Elliott, man, like he's got a future in the league for sure. Ended up getting injured. You know, he wasn't getting the reps anymore. I'm kind of like, I kind of like lost track of him. I didn't really know where Deshaun Elliott went. But I, you know, this year on the Dolphins defense, man, Deshaun Elliott's having a great year, you know. And then also on the other side of him, Javon Holland is arguably the best safety in the league right now, you know, this Dolphins secondary, once they get Jalen Ramsey back, man, my, my main point is like the Dolphins are going to be competing with anybody. I know the bills game looks bad right now, but I like I'm saying, I think having Jalen in that game would be a lot would, would make that score a lot different. Would the my, would Dolphins have won? I can't, I'm not saying that I'm just saying come playoff time, you know, when everybody's really juiced up, the, we know the Dolphins are going to be such a tough assignment for anybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, regardless of their defense, you have to contain their offense, which the Bills did. So maybe, but this, people, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We, I think, we can talk about the Bills later, but they're just all over the place. Oh, yeah. And like, last thing I just want to say real quick, too, though, and it's, I know you're feeling the same way as me. Look, everywhere else on the O line is kind of, it's kind of like they've come together. They kind of, you know, this unit's kind of established itself, right? But the center and left guard, like, especially Eichenberg, Man, the, the interior, the left side interior, it's like it's it's more than shaky. It's it's like we need to figure this out because it's the one glaring atrocity on the roster right now. And it's really hard to win a Super Bowl when you can't count on two of your guys on the interior. So, you know, maybe keep an eye on the Dolphins for a big trade, a big signing. I don't know what it's going to be, but definitely something, because the truth of the matter is I don't think they're going to be able to make the bull run if they keep the, what you can keep one of them starting, but you got to either move Eichenberg or win. It's not going to work. One of them's got to One of them's got to be on the way outs right now. Yeah, no, I Dolphins have some issues to fix. They're definitely still one of the top competitors in the AFC, though. 